Warning, the following audio has a lot of cursing. Welcome to the Cerberus Podcast. My name is Sam, also Cthulhu. With me today I have Kyle, also known as Zeus, and Josh, also known as Dionysus, from our team, Cerberus Tactical. Uh, today we're going to be talking about just some teching basics. A lot of the younger players ask how to make these guns better and stuff like that. Just simple intro stuff that won't break the bank. So I think first things first, we, at least I believe that all of us agree, for any kid starting in Airsoft, it's an AEG. Don't do a gas blowback. Don't go for HPA. What are your guys' thoughts on that? Would, yeah. you, would you advise using a gas blowback SMG for indoor or even outdoor guns like an LM4? Or would, or go A? But if you're just starting out, I wouldn't because the main looks boring for that is still out there. You just gotta pay attention to it and learn it you know. Yeah, uh, I would not go with a gas blowback primary. Uh, I might, end, a different story. Yeah. I might end up with one at some point, uh, but I'm glad that I did not get one as my first primary. Especially here in Michigan with the cold yeah. weather, that's a huge effect, like it's almost unreasonable. Yeah, like they're they're popular down south and out west in California where this where it's huge because they have nice weather most of the year. We have nice weather two thirds of the year. Yeah, this year we had about two thirds of the year. Yeah, yeah I was so surprised how warm the state for so long. Yeah, it literally just snowed, started snowing a few hours ago. Yeah, <laughs> you can see the grass anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah. but no, to, uh, to answer that question, I do not think, assuming. That you're good in the play, um, and that you truly are uh, new to the sport, I would stay away from gas guns uh, for the same reason you should stay away from a sniper rifle as you were the first. Okay. Um, and then also matching with that we've talked about before, stick with a rifleman's loadout for your start out. It's very versatile. There's a lot more plethora of gear you can get for it, and then the weapons are a lot easier to handle in terms of manipulating the gun. The parts you can get for it, such as M4, AK, G36, things like that. Um, so first things first, these guns are not nearly as accurate as the real steel guns that they're trying to imitate. Uh, so if you talk to any good tech, his first things are going to be bucking barrel and hop up. You can get them in different materials. For the barrels and the hop-up units, you can get ones made out of steel, you can get ones made out of aluminum. Uh, we'll start off with the hop-up unit. I personally go for a Lonex hop-up unit. They are cnc aluminum. Uh, B, personally though, the only problem I find is the loading nozzle for them into the mag tends to be a little tight, so I tend to drill them out a little bit. And then they work just fine. Uh, what are your guys' thoughts on pop-up units? Do you guys go for price or a certain brand? Uh, I can't speak. Uh, the M14 just doesn't want <laughs> No. Well, yeah, M14 is pretty limited. I mean, you got the stock one, you get the element, which is still stock. Hmm. Yeah, you, you picked a very uh, rough choice of the first gun for upgrading with no experience. Um, but if you're going with an uh, M4 or an AK, um, M4, I really like the, uh, oh, what is it, the, uh, the Prometheus Neo Chamber. I, I, other than the new Crytac pop unit that's out, and that's still some people debate which one's better, um, you can't go wrong with either one. I would pick, the Lonex one's very good. Uh, if I, if the other two were out of stock, I would have no problem getting a Lonex pop unit. They're very good. Um, but if I had a choice, I would get the, the Neo Chamber and or the Crytac top unit over the Lonex simply because the the Prami Neo Chambers machined to better standards uh, and tighter tolerances than the Lonex and the Crytac unit is designed with hard hopping in mind 
So if you do plan on upgrading your gun even further down the road and either trying to arm hop it yourself or sending it off to someone to have them arm hop it professionally, the Crytek unit is great because it's already set up for them to be able to do that. Um, one thing about hop-ups that also gets talked about is traditional style versus the newer rotary. I'm pretty sure you guys have been experienced with that, comparing the two. I personally like the traditional one more. <laughs> I'm just used to it. The rotary is nice, but I've never, I personally have not seen the difference, the fine tuning that everyone else believes in, but that's just me. It only helped work on a couple of those. I, I do like the rotary style a little bit better. No specific reason. It's easier to. Yeah. The adjustments are more slim. It doesn't kind of jump around as much. Mm -hmm. The sticks. I used both. Uh, I have a very I should say it's cool. It's actually pretty new, but I got it used uh G and G combat machine, little uh seven and a half inch barrel to my indoor gun. On um, that has a it has the stock GG hop unit with traditional dial. Um and that works fine for that. Um I also have a rotary uh, in my Crytac because that's what it comes with. I also just picked up a VFC Spartan. Uh the three hundred blackout line. Well sweet but I really like a blackout it was a it was a very spontaneous purchase because it was on sale. Um, and that also has the rotary style of it. I really like the rotary. I feel that it gives a little bit better adjustment as far as fine tuning goes. Um, and I feel it's more likely to hold its position better because if you are mock dust cover on your M4, it doesn't feel like I had that issue with the Lonex and my Crytek mm -hmm. where the, the dial's bigger. So when I would close my mock dust cover after making a hop-up adjustment to protect the hop unit, I would actually catch the dial and spin it so my hop-up would go from whatever I had adjusted it to, to nil. And that was, it took me about a half hour to figure out why my hop-up was not staying, staying in place at Irene, Operation Irene, uh, two years ago. So that was, that was a fun time. Um, so I mean, really, it just kind of boiled down to personal preference. Uh, Sam here likes the dials. They're very easy. They're everywhere. If something breaks on it, you can buy a rebuild kit for them. You buy a really cheap hop. You it for like seven bucks and then take yeah. whatever dial off you need and throw it on there. Rotary is a little different. I, uh, uh, they're not as common yet. Um, but I, I personally like them more. Yeah. Uh, guaranteed, they're pro wins. They are all rotary. They're CNC. They're, they're premium. They're liked a lot by the HPA guys, especially when it comes to flat hopping. And then there's also, and then there's all the different types when it comes to the uh, dial style versus the rotary types. Uh, you can get APS makes theirs, and they put them in all their stock guns. SEMA, you can get GMP. Uh, you can get the Lonex. Madbull also makes one. And theirs is like, theirs is called a three in one, because you can also attach and uh, an LED setup, so you can use tracer BBs in it. Uh, and then another note I have for it is the ICS guns. They're all these split gearbox designs, and their upper receivers are designed specifically to work with their hop-up units. They do make plastic and metal replacement hop-up units for... Yeah. For their guns, so you're not going to really get an aftermarket rotary style that works 100% with an ICS gun. So keep that in mind when you purchase ICS. They're good guns, it's just you're limited to your parts because it's almost a proprietary setup. It's almost worth it, though. Yeah, no, I, I like ICS's guns, especially that ape line that they got. It's built very well. They're split the box. I know, and... I like trading out those uppers, and it's a great idea. Um, and then another note, if you purchase older JG and Echo 1 guns, they liked to do split pop-up units, two pieces, so that you could actually open up the gun like a traditional M4, where it hinges at the front of the receiver. Oh, well, Echo 1 did like that too. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. And that, and then that correlation is just because those kind of, both those companies had their guns come out of like the same factory overseas, so it, that's why that kind of coincides with themselves. So most of those guns you can modify to use a standard one-piece hop-up unit, but it'll uh, 
you can run into problems if you don't know what you're doing. All right, next up we got uh, buckings. Another key component to creating accuracy and distance out of your gun. Um, you got to note that when you're looking for different buckings, there will be a degree usually associated with the bucking. So I've seen as low as 50 degree up to 80, 85 degree. Long story short, the higher the FPS, the higher the degree you should be using to match with your FPS. Otherwise, you're just going to start damaging the bucking because it's only made out of a silicone rubber. And that doesn't last very long under a lot of tension unless you reinforce it with better materials. That's why you can get 80 degree buckings. Um, I got a bunch of buckings listed here, but what are your guys' go-tos that you like? Uh, for R hop, flat hop, G and G greens, probably purples, and just standard, I'd go maple leaves. Okay. I really like the G and G green. Uh, it's very high quality. Um, it's very well made. Um, produces pretty even hop a lot of the time. It's thick. It lasts a long time. Um, and as well, I'm a little biased because of where we live. Um, it uh, it's very resistant to the cold. Yes. So you. If you live in the northern half of the country, uh, it, it has great effect. Um, it has great effect because of how cold it is. So, I was fine. Ginger green, definitely. Like I said before, uh, it's resistant to cold is one of the large reasons why I like it because of where we live in Michigan. Um, yep. but even if you don't, even if you live down south or out west in, uh, Cali, it's still a very good bucking to use while Josh makes a shit in the noise and back with pizza. Um, it's very well made. It's great for our hopping. The, uh, the Promi Purple is also a very good bucking, like Josh said. Um, yep. I am also, I haven't had a chance to use one, but from everything I've heard, the Mad Bull Red is also phenomenal. Yep, I have Mad Bull. I've used Mad Bull Red. For our hopping, from what I've heard, the Mad Bull Red is a phenomenal bucking to use. So, I've never had a chance to use one non R hop or even R hop really. Yeah. Um, that's just more hearsay from what I hear on a lot of the pecking pages and forums. Um, but I have experience with the maple leaf that had very good effect in a couple of my guns. Uh, Lonex, I have a Lonex in my R hop SR25 and I've hit Sam from over 300 feet away with it, uh, yeah. with one shot. So I, I like that. Uh, but GAG green and probably purple are what I use most. Yeah, the one thing, all the all of the G and G guns come with a G and G green bucking, so you don't have to worry about messing around with your buckings. It's very easy to tell. But it's called G and G green because it actually looks green. Um, Lonex, SHS, Garter, Modify, and Crytek all have buckings that are actually around the same price. You can get the Crytek bucking for about eight fifty. It's G-G not that expensive. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's and they're not always on sale. No. They have been a lot lately since I've been looking. Yeah, actually. they've been stocking up. I think it's just because GG released so many guns, they were able to mass produce their buckings a little bit more. And now That's they can start. And then finally, I got the barrels. Uh, most of your stock guns are going to come with a brass barrel. Or steel. Yeah, or steel. Uh, yeah, some newer ones are coming with steel. Yeah, the newer ones. But you get, you're basically compensated for the price. If it was came with a brass, you'd probably save that from the bus. Yeah. Um, they usually come with a stock inner bore of 604 up to, I just heard, 608. Uh, the inner bore is what determines how tightly it hugs the BB. Most BBs are just under 6 millimeter, just so that they fit through the barrel and create the back pressure for FPS. So, um... Aftermarket barrels, you can get them in steel, aluminum, and some of them are also high polished brass. I'm, I have the lengths here for just the standard shorty M4s are 275 to 280. Standard M4 length is 363 for millimeters. And then if you had an M16, I don't know why you would use it indoor, but uh, for an M16, it's 509. You can get ones for AKs, the traditional 74s, they are a 455. You can get shorter ones, 407. They come in all different lengths. And it's not a problem if you get a slightly shorter barrel than what your gun's already built with, because not all aftermarket barrels come standard length. 
like the OEM ones coming out of the factory. So, um, 601 versus 603 on a tight board. I am next to done trying to get a 601 to work. And I would never advise it for an intro player because the amount of money you're spending just on better BBs seems a little irresponsible for a hobby. I don't know how you guys feel about 601, 603. 601 can be one thing in one grand sand and can do the BB. That's all that it takes. A lot of cleaning. Sick cleaning yeah. and keeping it clean. So even a little bit of dirt can do a lot of, a lot of damage to it. No jam at all, scratching it. A lot of what I've found is 601's hinder performance, especially at long range. Um, 601's actually are not, you'd be surprised, they're not terrible for like some QB guns. Um, yeah. So for my GMG, uh, it would actually not be a bad idea to get a 601 barrel for it. However, the downside, again, uh, it's very easy for it to jam up. Um, like a, a 603, it's, it's harder. There's more wiggle room, so you can get it can get dirtier uh, and mm-hmm. still function. Um, preference, I would choose 603 over 601 every day. Really for that reason, for liability. Yeah. I don't always have the time or the desire to constantly clean my stuff. If I have to clean it all the time, I should probably look into something that's a little bit more durable, a little bit more reliable. Yeah. Um, I got. A lot of different brands here also listed off. One thing I'd like to mention, if you go on eBike's website, they have a brand called Modify, and they make a hybrid. Know that you have to use their hybrid bucking as well, so it's proprietary. I doesn't say that it's bad, just letting you know you're paying a little extra money versus cheaper options. So, um, Mad Bull. They have their Python, Black Python line. Theirs are all aluminum. Uh, they are 603. They also make another CNC 7075 aluminum barrels as well. Those are all 601. So, um, and they just recently came out with Mad Bull Steels, which are all 603. I have a Mad Bull Steel 603 in my primary M4 for outdoor and it it does fantastic. I used it at Ballahack Airsoft when we went to Virginia, and I, I, I got so many hits with that gun. I couldn't believe it. A lot better than using a brass barrel. Seriously. Um, depending on the brass barrel. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, this was a stock old barrel. Yeah, from the, this, a, this was not an EDG this was, barrel. No, this was just me mix matching parts. Yeah. Um, got Lonex. I think I personally like Lonex barrels. I think they're great. Uh, I haven't heard many complaints from them. Uh, I also like the Matrix barrels from me, like, uh, I know a lot of people get a little nervous when they look and see the Matrix brand of random, random parts that don't actually have a type, a name to what they're, they've been built. But Matrix makes Prometheus, they claim it's Prometheus quality polish on their steel barrels. They work for me, but they're definitely not a Prometheus barrel. <laughs> no. Yeah, they're a good C- if you need a cheap CQB 603 barrel, you, and it's, and you want steel. DCI or SHS. Yeah, that's Preferably a, DCI. Your cat makes me very slow. It's not like a deflating, uh, deflating balloon. Um, I used to have a Matrix barrel. Ah, uh, you, you don't. I still have mine. Well, I'm just saying, you remember mine, because you were playing with me when I used to have that, my old JGS system from way back in the day. And that worked very well, um, for how I remember it. Now, I'm sure if I were to compare that now to any of the other barrels I'm using, or comparing to the EDGI barrel that I'll be getting here shortly for my Crytek, it, uh, it doesn't hold a candle to it. But, as a cheap, cheap alternative, they work really well. Uh, ZCI is going to be a little bit better quality on the inside. Uh, the inner polish is going to be better, um, as well as uh, it's um, it's 6.02 diameter instead of 6.03. Yep. Um, that doesn't make a whole lot of difference, and realistically, the inner diameter of the beer, of the barrel makes far less difference compared to the inner polish of the barrel. 
the inner polish is going to make a much larger difference than the inner diameter. Mm-hmm. Um, so while it is a 602, it is technically more likely to get gummed up than a 603. The inner polish is better, so it's going, you're going to get better results with it. Um, I have a, I have a ZCI and I really like it. It works very well. What brand of BBC do you use that function properly with the barrel? All that I've used. I assume that I had any problems. No, any my cri- the Crytek is the only thing I've ever had issues with different brand BBs. And I use G&G BBs with it and they are pretty flawless. I used to use Vulcans and I started having issues with my tablet plate and or tablet plate spring. Still don't know which one it was. I replaced both and now it's flawless. Um, but, um, like I've used to use Matrix BBs. I've never had a problem with them. Honestly, yeah. they're very underrated. Yeah, I still use Matrix BBs. Are they, are they at the same level as like the G&G performance BBs or at the, uh, the BB Bastards, the BB Wars or anything like that? No, those are far better. But they're cheap, they're everywhere, and you can bulk buy them. Yeah. So if you have an LMG, Fly Matrix BBs or Elite Force BBs or some of the cheap ones. Some people swear That's by Elite Force BBs, but they're cheaper and they're everywhere. So if you want some, you can buy a hundred thousand of them for the cost of like twenty thousand of some really nice point fours. So mm-hmm. you might as well, depending on what you're using. Now, if you're using a higher end marksman's rifle or sniper rifle or something like that, you spend the money, get the better BBs. Uh, I personally, I have. Been testing out a bunch of different point threes. Uh, Jag, Jag Arms BBs. I like those. Um, what's the other one? I, re- I really like the GNG. I'm going to start sticking with the GNG. Those produce the best consistency out of the three. And there's a third one that I just picked up. But that was all with my right. Crytek. Was it the Crytek BBs? <laughs> no. So was, no, it wasn't. I still haven't tried those. I don't know if I should do it. Yeah. Um, they only go for point two. That's that. Yeah. Um, so. I want to try some BB Wars ones. Those are supposed to be pretty good. Um, but for now, G&G. I, there's a lot of people I know that use them, and they really like them. I personally use them, and I get the, that's the best. They have the highest consistency out of any BB I've used so far. Did you mention where you get the, those ECI barrels? I get them. I got mine from Grill Armory. So. Yeah, I don't. I mean, they come on other sites, but you should go to Grill, Grill Armory. Armory. Grill Armory and Clandestine Airsoft. If you are going to buy internal upgrades, if you're, if you want internal upgrades for your gun, or even if you're sending your gun off and you want them to upgrade your gun, you want that tech to upgrade your gun, um, ask that they buy the parts off of either Grill Armories or Clandestine. If it's your money they're spending. I'll leave so, links in the bottom of the description so that people can just click and go check them out. So that's what we got for barrel bucking and hop up. What would you say is uh, finally your Price point. What would you say is the max amount of money you should be spending on barrel bucking and hop up? You get what you pay for. I mean, you get what you pay. <laughs> you get what you pay for. But realistically, I mean, when you started out, what was your desire for your gun? Where you're just like, all right, I see all these prices. This is what I want to spend. Not because because all of us have been at the point where we didn't have the money. To still spend don't. on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, someone here is still going. Well, two of us here still going. <laughs> I actually just bought from Brill. Yeah, I, I know, that's my point. <laughs> um, $200 gun sitting on your lap? <laughs> $400 for yeah, parts coming in. Considering how much overtime I'm working, I have the burden. I'm not too worried about it. Um, but it depends on how much the gun needs to be. Yeah. Uh, like my G&G. I don't really care. It's a GNG. The thing is a tank that will never stop working. It's like a Pontiac Grand Prix. Like your old JG system. Yeah, it's like it's like an it's like an early two thousands, late nineties Pontiac Grand Prix. It will look like shit. It will look like a gypsy caravan that's like a thousand years old. However, it will work. It will never not work. It's just the way those things are. Yeah. They don't work amazing. It's not a high, I wouldn't say it's a high performance, but it's not a high performer such as, you know, CVFC, Crytax. Uh, the newer GMPs, the new classic armies, like all, it's not at that level, but it's perfect for an indoor gun, which is what I use it for. Yeah. So I don't need to put in an aftermarket barrel. I don't need to put in an aftermarket hop up looking, or a hop up unit rather, until they break or get so dirty that they're just inoperable. Now for the Crytek, 
I'm buying an EDGI barrel for it. Yeah. Because I know where to get them for $80. What's, yeah, the $80. Which barrel. is $10 more than a Prami, and it is literally 20 times the inner barrel quality of a Prami. So, yeah. Uh, it's actually, let me pull it up. I have it as a, as a tab on my computer. Hopsystems.com. It's brass, so you wouldn't think it's that amazing. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, you're unplugged. Yeah, it's got a lot of short um, barrel. EDGI, most of their starting to make steel barrels, although they're going to be about $120 a piece. But most of what he uses, he, they're brass, and he hand polishes them by, he, he hand polishes them, so you're not going to get a, a better finish. There, there are a couple better barrels out there, but they're all, again, handmade in a much smaller quantity than EDGI makes. He does them all by hand, and that's his job. Is he makes barrels for yourself. So there's more of them, they're easier to get your hands on, and they're not as expensive as the other barrels that cost $150, $200, some cost even more than that. I don't know, I'm, I'm willing to spend the money on any GI barrel for my Crytek because I like my Crytek. That is my, my primary, so I'm willing to spend that kind of money. This VFC here. I, I mean, I if you got, leave it stock, it'll never, it'll never have a problem, so I mean. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't really decided. I haven't had a chance to test fire yet, because I haven't been able to switch it over to Dean's connectors yet. Yeah. Actually, that's the next topic. Yeah. What so, a great well, segue. Kind well, of. there you go. Yeah. Next thing, <laughs> next thing up, I, oh, before, just, just one last thing. Uh, aluminum versus steel, there is a noticeable amount of vibration that comes from aluminum. It's versus steel. More valuable. Yes, yeah, overall. it'll vibrate heavier on aluminum just because of the shock of the gearbox firing. So you will have a less accurate gun. However, comparably, and it's very minute. You can fix that. Take a Teflon tape wrap around the barrel yep. before you put it in. The other yes. Yeah. yeah. And then a, a, a plus of aluminum in this lighter. Yes. So if you are building a super lightweight CQB gun, or if you have a very heavy gun, and you're trying to save ounces, aluminum like a race car. Then yeah, you're gonna want that aluminum. <laughs> so you're you're gonna want the lighter because if you're trying to yeah. shave ounces off at a time, that aluminum barrel, especially for a marksman's rifle or a sniper rifle, when it's that long, that much material, I don't know, it'll make a difference. It's also gonna vibrate a lot. Yeah. So wrap it in Teflon. Or some barrels come with um, o rings. So they come with the notches cut on the outside for the very small size O rings. So that when you slide in the barrel, that o ring fits in there and presses it to the inside of your outer barrel, locking in place. So still neutral. The barrel is moving the middle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The o-ring is mostly focused on the end. It does. But when it's that long, a BB is not going to make it vibrate that much. It's so, so, a little bit Yep. Coming from guys who've been working on building guns since what? Too long. Well, four years, years now. Well, there's a reason I pop both you guys out of tech, so I got sick of that. <laughs> yeah, no. Laziness is the justification. You don't put it in my house half the time. Yeah, because you have the tools. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, so as Kyle mentioned, Dean's connectors, uh, next to all guns for airsoft come with a plastic Tamiya connector. I've seen some of them for the XT60s or whatever it is. Yeah, and then most of them also, their batteries will come with the same connection. Uh, these have been known to fail. They do not have a good surface area to contact each other, and sometimes you'll pull the trigger and they won't work. You'll twist the battery and then they'll start working, and you're just like, what the hell? On that, uh, a buddy of ours just bought a VFC, Nick, and, uh, right. He, he, yeah, he, Bowman. Uh, yeah, he bought a VFC. He's and, trying to, uh, he's trying he's, to join us. He's, trying, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's one of the oldest members, man. He's always been an older member than you are. Yeah, um, well, he's got to start. Boys <laughs> across the country now. <laughs> um, and I play more. <laughs> I know. But, uh, he, <laughs> it, 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 came, my it came wired into me. He bought a, he's, he's entry level. He's been playing a long time, but he's never been into it. Level we are, he wants to get in there and keep him. I know. Um, we missed. So it. instead of you know trying to say, okay, well I need you to get, you should get this, 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 this oh. battery and this charger for that battery because it needs it. I just said, look, this will last. Yeah. It will get you what you need, and what you want. It'll let you shoot the gun. And he he bought a just a basic nine point six volt, like 
He was a nickel metal hydride battery. Yep. And he was shooting it, playing around it, set it down, left it plugged in, so he's gonna shoot it later. And all of a sudden it started smoking. <laughs> so, that's a common, that's a common issue that people have had with, to me, connectors, is their shit. Yeah. Uh, horrible resistance. Um, they are prone to melting. Um, There's a reason why a lot of the Tamiya connector guns have an integrated fuse in the in the positive wire line, so that the I'll say it, yeah. yeah. When you have a lot of back backed up energy stored up because there's a bad connection, and that fuse pops just so you don't destroy the rest of your gun. Yeah, that's why that's there. It's not really for connectivity anymore. I've run plenty of non fuse guns with lipos. Do you need the fuse? No. Is no, there, but is I, there I, any I reason that not to have it? If not. your gearbox were locked up and you kept trying to pull the trigger to fix it, you're going to melt the trigger contact. There's a reason I left my yes. my fuse in my car. Leave your fuse. I, it, it came with it. The amount of resistance that that fuse creates. It's very little. It's almost like oh, it's yeah. Well, I mean, I'm, it. I'm, I'm doing it from a minute, minor work standpoint. I just don't like to add that into my guns because yeah. I. I just yeah, like, in terms like of that's my preference. Yeah, it saved my scar, actually. <laughs> Piece of shit. Um, well, with that being said, since you guys do see more value in fuses than I do, do you like the traditional tubes, or do you like the car style with the teeth? The tubes. I like the tubes. They're sleeker. Um, they're but, because your like, scar comes with the teeth. The scoop ki- yeah, that came with the car style. I don't like that. It just takes it's it so like much my space. AK came up on it. Like you said, it's just more I don't, like know. I don't even know if this thing came with one. I don't even know if it was like more prevalent to easily get replaceable fuses and things like that. No, you can buy them both at another part store. Yeah, they're both very easy. To Make see sure it. you get the same amperage as the one that you got in there. Yeah, the same odd level. But again, on the fuses, like if you buy a mo- like if you buy a nuke vet from the Armory, I yeah. will get yeah, that's probably on the way. They're probably still in a- that's going to be it. Otherwise, they'll probably the fact. But a lot of the times, they don't come with them. Yeah. Right. They come without them because they ha- they're not, it's not a fuse built into it, but they're designed to handle higher amperages, yes. usually more than what the battery you're using can produce. So most of the time, especially for your average air softer, if you buy a, like a new fit and it, it doesn't so come with a fuse, then, yeah, then you're fine. You don't need one. I have a new fit. <laughs> My, now I probably should put a fuse, I probably should let the fuse up through that SR25. Because it's got a lot of stress on it for right. it. So it's like the spring. But, the whole yeah. But, do, does it really need it? No. That, that's what the, that's what the, uh, the FETs, that's part of what the FETs for. Um, Crytek has a FET. It also has a fuse. Why not? Crytek, but whatever. Yeah. It's I'm made, okay. It's made by yeah. Airsoft Tex. Yeah. I'm okay with either one. And yes, Crytek. Uh, it's, it's for a different podcast. I like Crytek. They did a ton of research for it. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be interesting. Um sponsored by Chris. <laughs> that would be interesting. All ones. of us with Chris AEGs. Vectors for everybody. <laughs> real ones, not your soft ones. No, because then we couldn't use them oh, on the yeah. field. Unless we went to Milson West event and just fired nine mil blanks on it. Yeah, it's forty five that. I thought they made two versions. They made the. I they, they might, made but no one cares about the night. No, it's such a game. You know they're not going to be nice and give us the forty fives just because. No. Uh, I'll talk to Cole and the lawyer. He'll, he'll give us one. He gets to play this shit like that all the time. Anyway, back to the podcast. Yeah. Um. So instead of the Tamiya's, go for something called the Dean's connector. Uh, and if you're really concerned, yes, they there are two different types. There's Dean's and then there's Mini Dean's. The standard Deans, and there'll be a picture you'll see as I'm talking. They're they always come in red, and it's just solid connections. Uh, anybody who has the ability to solder electronics can do this for you. It's not difficult at all. There's a lot of surface area to solder too. They're gold plated as well, so it's the best connectivity possible. And you can buy them in bulk for very cheap off of Amazon. Um. On that, there's actually two different types of connectors that I would really recommend. I was as soon as we started talking about these, it kind of popped in my head. I started working them up. Yeah, the, uh, X- <coughs> XT60 connectors. Uh, oh, they're very they're, they're similar to these, a little bit bulkier, uh, but there's far less resistance. So if you, and odds are, if you know, if you're into, if you're a, 
tips. If yeah, if you are an experienced tech, you've probably heard of them before. And if you're building high end setups like like a dual sector gear setup or a very high FPS rifle, odds are you're probably going to be using one of these anyway because you it's such a high tension build that you're trying to lower the, as much resistance as possible out of it. So you're already yeah. Using is there, if for, I mean, even like we're pretty, I would consider us more avid players than the average airsoft or However, we don't even really, we would not see a benefit in using this. Partly because no one else, especially in our area, no one else uses these. So it would be our team that uses them and that would be it. So our friends that play would not be able to use our batteries. They couldn't use our chargers. We couldn't use their batteries. We couldn't use their char- we could use their chargers. Yeah. yeah. That, that is so, the limit is that if you do change your battery over to match the Deans, you do need to change your charger over too. Yeah. Otherwise it'll just die and then you have to get it taken care of after you forgot. And while we're on the topic, if you have since we're talking about connectors, if you have to split a wire, say get it through a tight spot in the body in the gearbox mm-hmm. into the battery connector. You can use speed connectors or bullet connectors. Yep. But bullets do have a better kind of They're kind of, yeah, but they're bulkier. A little bit bulkier. More streamlined though. M4s yeah. and AKs. I prefer have the bullets them. for their strength and their connection because yeah. they yeah. hold better. Yes. But the spades, they're, they're so much more convenient to weave in and out of stuff. It's, it's hard to. If pick. you get the right size. If yeah. Like M4s and AKs, and a lot of guns will have the space to be able to use the bullets. And if they do use the bullets. And if you guys need to find this stuff, ask it in the comments below, and then we can link you to where we find this stuff online. Auto it's, parts stores. Well, you can auto parts stores, it's, but a lot of it's, it's very easiest, specific electronics. Sometimes easiest, Even Radio best Shack best does not have some of the stuff, but that's yeah. pretty. Rare. That's pretty rare. That mostly comes into like the MOSFETs. Like stuff. spade connectors, your um, bullet connectors, and the fuses, depending on either style of fuse. Yeah. You can find them at an auto parts store. It's just the easiest place to go. Dean's connectors and the XT60 connectors you can find in Hobby Store. So, like, uh, not recommended spe- to purchase. Specifically, like, uh, rural control, uh, like, um, auto RC wheels, cars. Like, RC cars, the planes, trains, that kind of thing. Anything that runs off a battery that, like, is actually pretty professional, they will have that stuff there because that is what they use. It's six dollars a pair. Yes, it's expensive, but if you need it and you can't wait, they do have it. Otherwise, go on eBay or Amazon. Amazon you, buy bolt. you can find ten of them with about twenty for like five bucks. Yeah, I bought yeah. I bought ten pairs with uh the shrink wrap. Yep. For like three fifty. On Amazon. I have Amazon. Yeah. So, they're very cheap. Yeah, that it's you can you can find anything. So Yep. Uh, next thing I got here is an upgrade. Some people don't consider it an upgrade, but I do. Uh, all of your stock guns, if they come with a battery, will always be an 8.4 volt, unless it lists otherwise. Uh, I suggest jumping up to a 9.6 NIM battery. And if you want to commit to it and learn about it, go to a 7.4 LiPo. I actually, there's a prevalent amount of 7.4 LiPos available. In different configurations that you can use in the rear of the gun in the stock or in the forend if you want to get a peck box. Um, it is better to have the fuse when it comes to a 7.4 just because they can be a little finicky, but. It's virtually the same as a 9.6. Yeah, the, the, res- the. Similar performance, yeah. but the light bulb's gonna last longer. If you take care of it properly and charge it. Yep. And, and it's, it's power band is gonna, so the difference, for those that don't know, the difference between a light, the, the very, very bare bones difference between a lipo and a nickel metal hydride battery, uh, the, the light, so when you're using a nickel metal hydride battery, I'm sure a lot of you that are soft that still use these older batteries, and it's not, I mean, everything is still, yeah, they still make, that's why I want double it. I mean, that's, that's that kind of thing. Yeah, they very look, common. Yeah, if you look at them, it looks like a pack of batteries. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's very, it's really what it is. Yeah. Um, as you use it, you'll notice that your rate of fire will start slowing down the more you use it. Your your, tri- your trigger response on the auto will get more and more laggy. Yep, there's until, a curve. Until and it's 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 progressive. As soon as that thing starts losing power, uh, think of it starting at 100. percent As soon as you start pulling that trigger, it's going to start going down. And whether you're using it or not, it's going to continue going down. The more you use it, the faster it's going to drop. But It'll, it's, it's going to continue to drop. Like graphically wise, it's like decreasing exponentially. Yes. Until you get to the end, and then if you go to a light bulb, it's a consistent output, so it's more linear. 
Well, it's once that stops, very, it gets too low. It's going to be very. Do not keep pulling yeah. the trigger. You will ruin it. It's going to be very yeah. linear until it's almost dead. And when it's almost dead, you'll know that. So just go. You'll be firing fine, and all of a sudden your fellow will go. Da, 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 and it'll it'll start dying. Stop, Stop using it immediately. Do, don't push it. Don't kill it. If you kill it, sometimes you can bring them back. But they some puffy, people have. That's when you got to worry. Yeah, they kind of they start acting up. They just it's just not a working. little bit puffy isn't bad, but once it starts to get real puffy, and you can yeah. little smoke. It might explode, catch fire. By puffy, we mean that it'll actually the, the case that it it's in it will really expand. It will physic. It will expand. I know we'll walk up and be able to squeeze it. There's a, a chemical bit. reaction happening inside that battery to the point where it can burst and cause fire. And that's what you hear when you hear the phrase <clears throat> lipo fires. It's just people being irresponsible or using very, very cheap batteries. Yes. And Please tell us more about how these fires can start. I have no idea what you're talking about, though. <laughs> and <laughs> nobody <laughs> can prove otherwise. I'm, sh- I'm sure that hotel knows. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, uh, on the, on that, on the topic of batteries, he did not burn the hotel. I did down. not burn the hotel down. It was faulty wiring in the wall. And Just it was, the room. It was, <laughs> yeah. it was, and it was not his fault. It was, it was bad wire. The whole, yeah. the whole hotel was full of bad wiring. Yeah, was, it was um, after the fact. It was proven. We were in something that's it. considered lower than a quality inn, <laughs> and you'd be surprised what you really get for a lower than a quality in motel. I'm so glad I wasn't there for that. Um, it was a fun event, though. I wish I was there for that. On the topic of batteries and lipos and nickel metal hydrides and ICADs, just because the description of the gun when you buy it says lipo ready, it is not. Please do not take that little. Yeah. If you go and try to throw an 11 to 1 into a stock gun, you're going to melt your trigger contacts, fry your wiring, and you're going to break your lips. If you're lucky, you'll only melt your trigger contacts. Or if you're lucky, you'll only break uh, I'd say, I'd say trigger contacts say, and then piston, and then after that, if you frag your gearbox. And this is very case by case basis. The, the, if you really want the best help, go to the Airsoft Teching Q&A on Facebook. Link the site that you got it from. So all you do is just open up the product page from eBike Airsoft UI, copy the URL that's in the search bar, and then post that as a comment on the Tekken Q&A, and they can, it'll link right to it, and then ask, is this gun LiPo ready? And then you'll get a plethora of comments explaining <laughs> yes, no, and why. Or you get a plethora of comments explaining how you're a dumbass and didn't read. Um, before you ask if it's LiPo ready, make sure it's got a MOSFET in it, like uh, even a stock MOSFET. There's some kind of power control like that, or current control. Yeah, see, like... The the biggest causes of it is the trigger contacts. There's resistance there. The well, uh, the quality well, uh, of the motor that's inside. Well, the jumping gun. to the eleven ones with trigger contacts, the issue was it arcing back and forth, and that's when it melts too. Late. Yeah, it gets too it gets too hot. And most mm-hmm. contacts, Lonex contacts can't handle it. And that's why. You but that Lonex. doesn't mean you should run. Get an aftermarket yeah. mask yeah. before you yeah. put the eleven one. Yeah, see. Even realistically, e- technically, even an 8.4 volt will melt your trigger contacts. Yeah. And, that, and that has happened. And that's why you never lay it on guns. the trigger when it's locked up. Don't keep pulling it until you release it. Just stop and take it to attack or something. Mm-hmm. Same reason you don't do like two and a half minute long full auto runs. Yes. Not good. It doesn't look good. It's mm-hmm. like running your car with red lines for a few minutes. It, no, it doesn't look good. Oops, sorry. It's not good. Work. Right. Um. If you do try to get a lipo, go to an RC Hobbytron. Do not buy lipos off of e-bike or Airsoft GI. They're Hobbytron. Very, I go to a hobby, I go to, hobby store. I go website. to yeah, Hobbytron. 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 Yep. There's a bunch of just hobby. They have been stores. selling yeah. lipo batteries. Correction. Hobby websites. The hobby, hobby stores. King. I use Hobby King. Yeah, Hobby King. That's the one thing. Hobby yeah. stores charge ridiculous price. Get them on. Yeah, uh, they've been making batteries for RC cars and airplanes for years. Hobbyking.com. There's so many different configurations and sizes, and they have all the information when it comes to their voltage, how much mod they have, and then their C rating. And the key is the C rating. Uh, the C rating is how much power is being shoved into the gun every time you pull that trigger. So, and then it also has a triple effect as well, so it'll start at like 30C, and then it'll trickle down to 25 or 20C, and that's with just the constant drain. So, on full auto, 
your first shot will technically be faster than the rest of the rounds you fire in full auto. That's not bad. I'm just explaining what it does. So I vote uh, no higher than 35C on a 7.4 LiPo. 11.1 LiPo, I don't like going any higher than 25, especially for people who are just getting into it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Josh over here, I I put Dean's on a 50C LiPo for him. It's, yeah. It, I don't know why I do this for my friends. Sometimes. Yeah, for, <laughs> yeah, for, for, for entry level and even for intermediate air softwares, there's no real reason to go over 25 or 30. So no. There are people that run 65, 130, 70, 140, and that's burst rating of, of, uh, 130. Um, or burst rating of 70 rather, and burst yep. rating of 65. And these are people that, again, they tech all the time. That's what they get. Either, either A, they get paid to, or B, they've been doing it so long, and they just are the best at it that they, they, they can do it in their sleep. And they build these incredibly high stress systems that run these stupid high powered batteries because they're running 60, 60 rounds per second at 400 feet per second. That is a very small percentage of, uh, that's a very small percentage of air softwares. So there's no real reason to go over 25 or 30 C rating. A lot of you have a battery that is not burst rated. No, I have a flat side. line 20, but it it's also a solid, flat line 20. Yes. So when you pull the trigger, your first three rounds are duh, 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 and then it drops down to a more stable duh, 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 and it will sit there forever. Yeah. But so because, because it doesn't have that burst rating, it's not able to continue that kind of that, that, that full on 100% full bore sprint. It kind of, it's, it's like a sprinter. You start out a full bore sprint and then you slow it down to keep a solid speed that you can go forever. Yeah. Wherein that, that burst rating is like shot of adrenaline. So you, you quit spurt off the line and then someone gives you a spurt of adrenaline and you just keep on going at that speed. Yeah. So That's if, you're, that if you're planning on using your gun on semi auto a lot, it's probably best to just focus on that burst rating. Versus the continuous rating. Yes. So if you're just doing that, go for a 25, no more. Otherwise, you're going to start creating so much resistance in the trigger context. That's when the melting starts happening, just from yeah. the heat and the shocks, the arcs, pardon me. Yeah. Um, next, I actually feel that a lot of the guns these days also don't have as high quality motors as they potentially can be with all the aftermarkets you can get. I actually would personally consider upgrading your motor. Uh, a lot of them get matched to the spring tension that's in the gun, so depends on where it functions. What kind of building? That's the justification. Yeah. yeah, like I spent the morning. I've got the ASG motor in bottom grill that works in the best program on the seven spring. Right. That's got a lot of power behind it. Without that, I'm right there. So. Uh, when looking at your motor, your stock motor, unless you're buying a customized gun, your custom or second hand, you're usually going to get. Motor with the Ferris magnetism. Yeah. If you're buying second hand, um, I recommend SHS. As far as the TPA goes, um, just starting out or just replacing the motor, stick with something balanced, 18, 20, what, 22 TPA. Yeah. The new, the new ZCI motors stick with are, motors. are pretty good. They're cheap as hell. And they're, they're true, they're, they're torque motors, a true torque yeah. motor, they're balanced motors, fantastic. Yeah, the stronger magnets in them, yeah. They're, they're good. But stick with the balanced motor. Lower TPA, it's going to be a higher speed. Where you go the higher TPA, it's going to be more torque, which is for heavier end builds like DMRs. Or you can use springs. And the nice thing about high torque, like, I am, I am one that would really recommend high torque for everything. Mm -hmm. Your rate of fire is going to be lower. Yeah. Oh, boo hoo, no speed stuff. It makes well, a it makes your full auto a little bit more realistic. But it makes if you get you, you low gear ratio yes. high torque motor, you'll actually get a little bit more speed. Yeah, out you'll get a high speed. You, you will get a higher round. Just percentage. because it turns harder, you get a lot yeah. more trigger response yes. out of it. But your your again your trigger response, like Josh just said, your trigger response will be amazing for the high torque. Thank you, lucky car. The high torque motor is going to accelerate, makes its top speed faster. Like a drag. But it won't be as fast. Where you get the high speed motor, which takes a while, takes a little bit to get up to its max speed, but it's gonna be faster. Yeah. Um, um, there are three types of motors we just mentioned that the high speed, high torques, and then there's magnum motors. 
They, it's, it's, yeah, it's like a balance board. It's like yeah. a high performance balance. Yeah, high performance yeah. balance. So if you're just looking for that all in one motor, it's usually the Magnums cost sometimes a little more, but. How my Matrix Magnum like 35 bucks, 40 Mine's bucks. I mean, comparatively to its counterparts, counterparts in well, its same brand. Matrix depends Magnum. on the make. Yeah. Matrix Magnum came in, you got, you got the one with the red writing, the blue writing, the red was the more twerk, yeah, was the But yep. they're still 18 to 20. Yes. And I, I love it. Still the Baylor Trail. That was such a, that was one of my favorite motors I've ever used. And that's a pretty popular motor. It's kind of underrated. A lot of people don't really use it, but people that do use it really like short it. Short type does not fit in the M14. Don't do it. <laughs> Jeff's too <long. laughs> Um, use. Also with TPA. First time you've ever had that problem. Another stat that comes with those. Yeah. Another stat that comes with motors with TPA is RPMs, rotations per minute. Uh, I think the lowest I've seen is 1800, 18,000 RPMs. And it, it's typically, those are the higher torque motors. I've seen all the way up to 60,000 RPM. I think even higher than that. Those are just the more expensive. I've seen 72. Yeah. yeah they usually Which, don't. What's that higher end brand? They usually they don't go ASG. any higher than, uh, it's no G- higher than the that. GMP. No, the, the, the Premier Premier one. You got oh, the uh, GMP Dummy or something? Teamly Motor. Yeah, Teamly the Teamly oh, GTs. Okay. They're very expensive. They're very high performance. There's a lot of techs that use aftermarket parts that rather use a cheaper motor because they, the math wise, RPMs ratio, to the actual TBA that the cost you're paying does not correlate to the yeah. performance gains that you mm-hmm. see. Yeah. Compared to, say, again, the ZCI motors. They're yeah. cheap as hell. And SHS they're true torque the motors. motors. They're about the same. SHS and Monex are both very good, but they're technically balanced motors if you go solely based on TBA. They're both around 16 to 18 TBA. And so I spent a little bit extra on the ASG off the grill. That's yeah. 28 round right Yep. Split. Which is what the ZCI I bought it for the torque because that's what I did. Yep. 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 Oh, and, uh, torque will run, run cooler. Torque, yes. The torque motors will not get as hot because they run cooler and more efficiently. Yeah. They get up to speed faster, but it, because it's not as fast as the speed, they run a little bit more efficiently yeah. and they run cooler, so they're not going to drain your battery as and, fast because they're not working hard. And some companies do make a vetted motor cage, motor keys. Yep. Yep. My crack came I've, with one, my VSC did not. From what I've heard, they do work, but I can't it, speak. It, it is easier to get dirt and whatnot in there than if it's not careful. I'm glad I have one of my Crytek, because my Crytek has a franken water. Yeah. So, that, it, well, needs, it needs one. Yeah. And I'm, I don't know. And like you brought that up too, the franken motors or franken torques, they're usually called. Those are custom built by techs or other airsoft players to reach a certain level of either speed or torque. Yeah, we'll be able to talk more about them, the advanced teching, all the explain our hopping and things like that. Or shimming, I'll take some hours to do it. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, I just got a few brands, it's like APS. They released their motors that they put in all their guns. I've heard some good things about them. Not necessarily, it's just for durability wise, they're fine, but not a performance. Echo One, their motors are great. Uh, GMP sells off their motors. They have the GMP 120 and the GMP 140. Those are matching their actual spring tensions for what FPS are trying to do. Uh, the e-bike motors, the, uh, the, those matrix ones that you're talking about. So they have the matrix red and matrix blue and then e-bike released their own specialty Sonic and Godzilla torque motor. Which are, that's, it's, it's, it's very, it's essentially like a rebuilt or a rebranded Matrix Magnum motor. Yeah. Is what they are. Um, For a very, very basic down, down, very bare bones explanation is basically what it is. Uh, Lonex, they have their set of motors. Uh, those are a little more expensive. We're starting to get into the more expensive brands as I'm going on with this. I liked Lonex a lot. They do build a very decent motor. It lasts a long time. The pinion gear on the head is great. But comparing them in price-wise to the ASG line that came out, and they have so many more options. I actually kind of prefer ASG, given all the stuff I've done with those now and other people's guns. I have heard that they do have some issues. Uh, the ASG or the Lonex? The ASG okay. motors. Um, same with the Lonex. From what I've heard, the Lonex motors can get pretty hot. But... I've never had that issue with my Lonex motor, but yeah. I don't really push it super hard. Um, 
And ASG, the people I know with ASG voters are the left, wrong with it. So, it's just kind of how much you want to spend and what you want on your voter, really. It's just like everything else. You want to, you want to spend more, you can get the really nice stuff. Um, and now for the, this is more of a personal choice. In your guys' experience, would you advise improve your guns or replace it when it's broken? What's your mantra for <laughs> your guns? Because me, I started out the gate with just replacing stuff because I liked just trying new things. I didn't really have stuff that broke until I broke it or something. Do what I say about as I do. Sam should learn. I don't know. Run it till it breaks. <laughs> I don't do the things you do. Run it till it breaks and then and then fix it. Save for the very basic. Save your time and money. Yeah, save for the ba- it, and would, by by save I mean except for the ba- the very basic upgrades such as motor, hop up deeds connectors, batteries. hop up bucking, batteries, barrel, barrel. Would you say batteries. bucking barrel and hop up is the you can go to improve and not worry? Consider that under the replace category. I would even say bucking and barrel. You don't really need the most hop up buck. Most hop up units are are. They're just they're, they're acceptable. But yeah, you got to tune it. The only thing is, yeah. people try to expect it to work immediately. Well, you got to play with it a little bit. It takes yeah. time. To yeah, set up for a particular. You BB also have to find what BB you like, what BB yes. works and best, tune it and to then that. tune it to that. Yeah, I've been to many rec games where they weren't. They didn't even know what the hop up was in their gun, and then I tuned it, and they're shooting another twenty feet. Oh, man. and they're just like, oh, I'm like, yeah. You didn't have to spend, you, you didn't have to ask me if I have to spend 50 bucks. No. Learn about your stuff. Ask but, questions. Yeah. But as far as, um, improve or replace or wait till it's broken, uh, wait till it breaks first. My M14's been breaking every game since I took it apart the first time when it was not broken. How many years ago? Five years? You've been, you've been playing with that thing for five years? It's that old. It's a okay. You bought the same thing I bought the Masada. I didn't think it's not. And it's not, and <laughs> also that SEMA M14, it's not because it's a lemon. No, it's the no, owner's no. an idiot. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> oh, the um, best part is you, people would pay you to work on their guns, and yeah. then you would fix their guns and improve them, and they would work See, flawlessly every, until you touch your I've own. Got, I've just got that kind of touch. <laughs> like, I think I mentioned this in the first podcast, and that was the very first one. Uh, when it comes to working my own guns, I try to do stupid shit. And like people say, ask a stupid question, get a stupid answer. That's your what you get. Is the answer? Yes. <laughs> to all Constantly those breaking questions. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to me working on somebody else's guns, they ask me to do something. I focus on doing that specifically, or maybe like a minor tweak here and there. I don't charge for it. Like, Shimmy is a little bit off. I'll do that real quick. Yeah. It, it, but I won't ship them back unless it works the way it's supposed to with policy. Like I'll say. Yeah. But most of them are local and they're like, oh yeah, it's fine, the next thing is not till then. Like, alright, well, lunch. I hate sending out a bad product. So yeah. Like, even my eBay rating website. Um, how do you feel when it comes to these guns with metal versus polymer? Um, I personally like metal. One, because the weight. I like the weight. Um, Two, I've, I've, had problems with plastic in the past where stuff breaks so much more. And I'm not talking about internals, I'm talking I, about externals. I won't really say I have a preference. Um, the only thing to focus on when either one high quality plastic or a CNC body or something that's not pop metal. So you can get cheap plastic or you can get cheap metal and then that's where the issues arise. I mean, either way, if you've got the good plastic or the high quality metal, you're going to be fine either way. But, yeah, like, Bomber will be lighter weight though. Yes. Which, I have, I have all. My G and G is polymer. Yes, and G and G has the highest quality polymer polymer receivers on the market. It's better than it's better than Token Rui's, better than uh what is it, King Arms, which you you have yeah, more experience with the King Arms one. Yeah, um, reinforced nylon. Didn't last through a hammer. No. Well I, he was trying to punch the pin out. I'm just trying to punch a to pin change out. out the uh the the, the, the well, trigger card. Is stronger than something. Yeah. Um, okay. And uh, um, G- 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 G
I beat on my GMG pretty hard in the uh, men's facility when we had it, and it, it <laughs> classes <laughs> says this laughs the one that <laughs> <sleeps>. literally <laughs> sleeps with his stuff. Hey. <laughs> I'm sorry, what'd you name your G36Ks? Or your E's? Which ones? Oh. What'd you name them? Then you slept with them before they them go through your Oh, well, well the, the DMR style one is yeah, Excalibur, and the other one is, uh, Clarence. <laughs> the bastard yeah. sort. He tucked him in before he went to bed. So? Yeah. I've had sex with your stuff too. Yeah, he just yeah. makes fun of me to his videos. I beat up my G <laughs> and And, uh, <laughs> Yeah, he doesn't name his shit. Oh no, he just and, uh, he abuses the shit out of it. If and I try to name that, it becomes the best violence in the best. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, but the, 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 the GNG has lasted a long time. It's yeah. never cracked, it's never fractured, nothing's ever misaligned well, itself. And how much abuse did your S system take? A lot. Yeah. But that's also craftier material, and we were outdoors most of the time. And so when I fell, I would land on. You know, twigs or soft grass. Right, well, it still didn't mess with you. The only problem you know, was trying to get that box suppressor off of the ice cream. Well, that's because I tightened it way too much. There was a steel suppressor that was way too heavy and then just left it there for a couple of years. That was a good time. Kind of um, but then like the steel on my Tritech, um, that's very high quality. We were at Operation Homeland, uh, by Lion Club two years ago. I was, no, it was, it was at Irene, uh, two years ago. When I was at the MUTC facility in Indiana, I was parkouring through that, the, through the junkyard. I don't know if you guys remember that. Yeah. You guys were behind me. Yeah, jumping up through there trying to get up behind that I truck. My pants, yeah. yeah. You remember me when I biffed it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I fell. My, I jumped and my foot slipped down some of the concrete and I landed chest forward. Thankfully, there was no concrete in my face, but my gun yeah. saved me. I landed on my gun on the, on a concrete slab that I'm about Drop what 15 20 feet off the ground at that point, yeah. and land. I had a fairly decent $120 scope on it at the time, too. I still have that scope on it, and I slowly raised myself up. I didn't, I, I wasn't hurt, I didn't feel any pain, so I figured I was fine. I was just so scared to look at that rifle. I was figuring I was gonna see glass from that scope everywhere, and my gun was gonna be all caved in, receiver would be cracked, something. The, the CNC metal. Kind of scuffed, not really. I mean, it didn't. But I mean, hold up. It didn't look like I fell on concrete. It looked like normal wear and tear. Honestly, I couldn't even. I took the paint. I, I, I couldn't even tell you where I landed now if I were to look at it. I mean, it doesn't look like I right. hit concrete. Yeah. Like the other and the scope was fine. Who, uh, the pet person with like a theory. Yeah. Tell where he hit. Yeah. Um. So, but like a pot metal, like if I had uh, like a Du Bois M4 metal M4, or even a Steema, honestly, because the pot metal, oh, they're no, the M14s make it. Yeah, it, yeah. it would. That would have probably cracked because it's not as strong. It's not as robust. So, I mean, it, it's way lighter. It's way cheaper, but it's not as robust. And if you're gonna be playing hard, like you like you would in real life, or you know, just be pushing yourself because you want to have as much fun as possible. You might want something that's going to be a little more durable. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then on the same subject of placing with broken, you guys have to remember that if if your gun's actually not functioning properly, the moment you give your gun or you do the work yourself to someone who is not licensed through the actual manufacturer, you will void the warranty that's on that gun. A lot of the guns get 30, 60 days. Some of them even get a year, even two years of a warranty. I think, I think Crytex. Crytex. Yeah, as, as, as long as it's not opened, I think they will work on it. Cause like, Tucker, I feel Tucker's that's had, only the gearbox. Tucker had his for over a year. He had his for as long, uh, longer than I've had. Well, I, had my, I had mine for almost two years. Yeah. And he's had his long before I did. He's had his for over two years. And, and, he, they, and he just sent his in to be worked on. I'm like, yeah, no, we'll take it. We'll work on it. We don't get it back. Working. Yeah, and he got yeah. it back. He just got and it. And it back actually renews it. your warranty too when they do yeah. that. Yeah. So, but Cry, Cry Attack is a different story. They are the that's a high tier gun. They are the epitome. Their 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 customer service and tech support is top notch. I mean, it's it's hard to get better than that. Yeah. So it's most companies are not like that. So just letting you know. That if something breaks and you work on it yourself, you will avoid that warranty. If it's something simple like the gearbox is having problems in functioning wise, 
and you have the warranty card, just call it in and they'll take it. They'll have you ship it in a box, in its original box too, mind you. They'll just throw away that box right when you get the gun, and then just mail it in. So, um, did you guys have any other amazing horror stories of our terrible escapades trying to build these things? <laughs> I know, I know we. Your five year history with that M4 and yeah. Yep, and like I said, next week I gotta contact you and get the hydrogen for the building box over there. Like, that's why I was, you said it starts at 3 o'clock, just kind of pull it around the, whatever, the yeah. whole time you can say. But I'll actually oh, try yeah. to set that up while I'm here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thanks for that. Is he still on No, next week. Okay, next week. Yeah. Well, I mean, you got the M14. That MP5, you didn't do anything to. I think I did a little bit of the interior work on that. That thing was a monster. You never, you never really had any issues. No, I mean I blew it up once with an 11 one, but that's because I was going to replace parts anyways. I already had parts on. Oh yeah, I, I remember said, that. I used Mike's 11 one. We did the defense. I think you lasted one mag. I I had that drum or the dual magazine in there. Yeah. Drums and I just kind of blew it up. I cracked the front of the gearbox off. We said that was all. We knew what happened. I just want to see. You. How long did you take? Mm. And then what else? What was that that easy you outshot take? most of the guns there. And you built that one in four. I don't know if you got rid of that. That Echo One that I took to Irene. Is it Echo One or is it a Black Ops? The Echo One. This is the Echo One Barry. Oh, right, right, right. It's the Rex Seven. Yep. Yeah, yeah built that and bought it for like hundred and fifty and sold it for one. Mm. Then you have that AK. So that's the direct and then four and put together need the hand guard for that. Yeah. A hand guard for an AK? No, it's six inch. Oh, I do. It's just for a real system. I do, it's just like thirty bucks a piece or something like that. It's like Yeah. 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 Do you have any wonderful numbers outside of Outside of the crazy bullshit that we try to do with these guns and everything? No, know? not really that bad. Uh, Masada, because, well, my Scar Heavy, actually. <laughs> that's recent. It's still not like yeah. No, I bought, I bought a VFC Scar Heavy for $75. Yes, I know. And, uh, I spent another $50 for, uh, buying new stuff for it that was either missing or was badly damaged. Plus on. sending it in. No, I'm not, no, I'm, after talking to a couple of people on some forums that I know that are very reputable texts, they think it's a hop up issue, so I'm just gonna send it out when I send the card tax bill, when I get that out, have the R hop bench and have the R hop that too. They think that'll be the solution to the problem. You get them know to do that same way. Yeah, I will. Um, that's been a nightmare that gun has. I've had that gun for two years and it's worked for about six months of it. I, None of us can figure out why. It's just, it's actually, um, Masada just kind of gave up, uh, after four and a half years of slaughter, it decided it was time to retire, <coughs> and nothing we did got it something. So, uh, well, the only issue now is it just stays on form. It's just, still yeah, it's and, and ended up buying a Lone X gearbox. I got a, two, a Lone X gearbox shell. Two weeks of and then, and yeah. then yeah. built yeah. a gearbox from scratch. Um, and then just kind of fine tuning that. Um, nothing that Josh I still has think to it's a issue. say nothing that Josh has had to deal with. But I'm glad for you. Yeah. I got my good ones. Yes. Zero. How many? Yeah. Oh man. Everything to well, the two thirty six E's, both of them. The case. last I knew they're in case. Yeah, Let's start. One of them was mine. Look, I never should. I never should have sold that to you. By the way, I kind of regret selling that to you. Yeah, I mean, last I know, there's a lot of It is bad. Body bags. Parts. Not recently. After a while. Your FAL is the only thing that ever worked perfectly, and it still works, even though you just never use it. Yeah, but I mean, it's an outdoor gun. I don't and, you know. Much. Whatever. But, yeah, between FAL, G36, M4, another M4, another M4. Second G36. Another M4. 
Yeah. No, no, not another. Well, actually, now it's another important. Two Stark Rifles, Mark 46. So you did win that G&G at Bell, I think. Yes. It's a new clip. That's wonderful. Yeah, I'm amazed at it. Yeah. It'll be a lot easier now with the Trailblazer carrying stuff. The gas mileage may go for that. Yeah. Yeah. It's worth it for space. Well, not like mine's that great. I have like 25 miles per gallon. I think show. we want to end the end on time. Isn't too bad because I was like 19 in the city. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> the, the turbo's in my but car. I drive like an asshole too. The turbo's in my car are not exactly designed for efficiency. Okay. I'm, I get like 17 in the city. It's pretty bad. Yeah. Alright, so to finish this off, finally, websites we go to. Uh, you can go, the, there's parts on, got a lot Airsoft GI, Airsoft GI, Airsoft GI, Airsoft GI, Airsoft GI, yeah, so, if you, the easiest ones for is e-bike, Airsoft GI, Airsoft Megastore, because that's where you guys are getting your guns, that's, most likely. I do like to buy their Boneyard deals, so they'll be there, like, buy one, Airsoft Megastores. Yes. Like, I like to buy the Boneyard guns, I fix them up, and get them ready to be sold, or used, or whatever, and then, I use the song on the e-bike for them. And now for aftermarket parts, where are the go-tos? I know Brill for sure, <clears throat> clandestine um, for sure. Any other ones that you can think of? For internal parts, that's we be listed. Occasionally, you like one of the two. I want two for internals. With externals, you like here's off next story. Well, externals, I use a lot of random yeah. sketchy sites out of Hong Kong to get a lot yep. of my external oh, stuff. Oh, um, KH Mountain for internals and externals. That's KH, a good one. KH Mountain, you can get so much stuff yep. for like pennies right. on the dollar. Um, it's at, so much cheaper, but you make up for it in the shit. Yeah. SNI Tactical is a good one. I use that one a lot for like optics and grips and stocks and stuff. Is it the WGC shop? WGC shop is very good for more obscure stuff for some of the more parts. The more, more Asian guns like like Scar Heavies or HK 416s, 417s, some of the harder to find parts for those, they carry. Or used to carry and they still every once in a while carry what's going to lose them. Um, what's some of the others? Uh, Airsoft Pro, FCZ. Uh, JK Army, Spec Warfare, Amped. Amped and uh, Airsoft Junkies are both local to the United States. Uh, Amped, is it Amped that's out of Pennsylvania? Yes. Yep. Amped is out of Pennsylvania. I forget where Airsoft Junkies is out of. Um, let's see, you have... Uh, Airsoft Station, that one's yeah. Europe. Uh, they do a little more higher tier. Air Splat was bought out their own. They're still open. They're just owned by the hobby companies now. Oh, yeah. are they? Yeah, I knew they, they, were, I knew they were. I knew they were. Yeah, yeah, they blackout sailed their their yeah. stock for their current owner, their previous owner. Yeah, yeah I, I, I knew. I knew that they just were, kind of like took that money and they started. Really sure. so, yeah, I mean, like for guns, guns and equipment, I would say you like your airsoft GI. They're gonna have some of the more newer stuff, and it's gonna be better priced. Yeah. Um. The, like ebooks always got a deal, like over shit price, like fifteen, ten percent off. Yeah. And if you have them on Facebook, there's always and they're put on there that never goes away. Yeah. yeah. And they're proactive in making evaluation videos to yes. show you what it is, how it functions, and and they just changed their website, and I'm actually a big fan of it. A lot of people don't seem to be, but I, yeah, I, don't, I don't know why. I, I really like it. On there I thought it was cleaner. Website. It's I I've heard the mobile sucks. Yes. But the new mobile site sucks. But yeah, Airsoft GI is mobile a lot better. But the I'm actual sure the on the computer, computer, I've been surfing it past couple days because I did just make it work. Yeah, and I really like their mobile site or not their mobile site, their uh, the, the PC site. I think it looks really clean. It's way but it looks more professional. It doesn't look like cluttered. There aren't videos playing every two seconds on four different sides of the screen. <laughs> Alright, well I think that'll do it for this episode of the podcast. Let us know in the comments if you have any questions for any of the parts that we've at, told you about. If you have any questions on where to find this stuff, we'll give you links to where you can find it, especially with the more obscure parts, the uh, electrical components that we talked about especially. And uh, like us on Facebook, we post a lot of our videos there as well as events we're going to. So. If you're in the Michigan area and you have questions about mill sims, recreational games, things like that, you want to, teching, you want to hang out with us at Airsoft Events, let us know. We'll try to meet up with you there. 
And if you're a new airsoft player, please ask questions. Seriously, you have no idea how disappointing it is for a lot of the younger airsoft players to come in, act like they know everything about how airsoft world works, and then they have all the problems in the world, and then they think the right sports off, they just right off. Yeah, they just they blame the sport for all their problems. Mm-hmm. When in fact, it's just because you didn't take the time. So. Yep. Thanks for listening, guys. Yeah, actually, the only thing I got from Brill was a lower FPS spring for my bolt action. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, and then a patch. His airsoft mechanics patch. <laughs>